Good morning, my friends. It's Sunday, July 14th. I'm in Boston. I'm at the home of one of my friends. Well, two of my friends, they got married. They both went to Vassar with me. Leisha is a professor of philosophy, hence all the books behind me. Um, and she's also a violinist. And I wanted to show you, this is a book from Italy and a picture of a Stradivarius violin. Alicia tells me there are only 900 of these violins in the entire world. Such an exquisite instrument. Made with grace and beauty. And the sound of which is extraordinary. She has gotten to play one once in her life and said she will never forget it. Today is our day of worship. I'm gonna go visit Trinity Copley Square in Boston, can't wait. And today, one of our scripture texts is David. David is, King David is given permission now by God to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, the beginning of the building of the temple. The Ark of the Covenant held the Ten Commandments within it, and it was a, a potent, indication of God's presence. People were terrified of it. Sometimes people died who housed it if they didn't do it right, or they were very blessed. The Ark of the Covenant was terrifying, but it signified the potent presence of God. And so when God gives permission for David to give this Ark a house, God is basically saying, I will live with you now. I will live among you. It was almost a foretaste of the incarnation of God. I will be with you, God with us, Emmanuel. So David is full of joy as he brings the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem and he's dancing to music. David was a musician. The Psalms are attributed to him. We know that he played the lyre and he sang, lyre being a, an ancestor of the violin, a stringed instrument. And David was just dancing and praising God and singing and just enjoying life. All over this planet, People sing in praise of the divine. All over this planet, music is a unifier. Music transcends our differences and lifts us to realms that we don't understand. It is an essential part of worship. Music of many different kinds. It depends on what makes people's hearts sing, but music makes people's hearts sing in different styles, of course. But there is something about it that is close to God or of God. In fact, the very first verse that we know of in the Hebrew scriptures is the song of Miriam. She's singing after the crossing of the Red Sea. Listen to music. You don't just do it to rest. You do it to find your higher self, to be closer to God. We need music and art if we are to elevate the human race to a a level where we can have compassion for one another and cease this endless warring. Music is a bridge. It is an instrument of God. Cherish it, nourish it, listen to it, play it, dance to it, give thanks for it. In the book of Revelation, it says that the angels sing. Music is the language of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of music and art and all that elevates us into your presence. We thank you for the gift of friends, vacation, loved ones. I will pause and let you give thanks for anything in your life. We ask you to bless the sick, the suffering, those who mourn, those who are addicted or mentally ill. I will pause and let you speak aloud the people that you need to pray for today.
Call us into your service today, Lord. May we find places of worship today. May we sing or play or listen to music. May we remember how blessed we are to be alive. And may we serve you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.